So we are discussing function oriented software design and is in this we have seen this context uh, diagram which we called as level 0 DFD data flow diagram. We examine the SRS document that is software requirement specification diagram and we represent each high level function by a bubble that is a processing station or a function and we represent this data input to every high level function. Then we represent this data output to every high level function. So each high level function will be represented as bubble and the data input to every high level function, data output to high, every high level function. This is level 1 DFD. And about high, higher level DFDs, each high level function is then progressively decomposed into its smaller parts that, that we call as sub functions. We identify the sub functions of the function and we then identify the data input and data output of these sub functions. First, we try to find out or we in not a good word disintegration but a better word would be to uh, part it to distribute the work. So we find out or we make sub functions from a function and then identify the data input and data output for this sub function. So these are represented by DFDs and this decomposition or disintegration or uh, parting the decomposition of a bubble is also known as factoring or exploding. The better word would be factoring or exploding. And then each bubble, each bubble is decomposed to say three to seven bubbles. Again, seven is a magic number. So we try to decompose it into three to seven bubbles, factor it or explode it. Less bubbles, that means too few bubbles will make our decomposition superfluous. Means if a bubble is decomposed in just one or two bubbles, then this decomposition doesn't work. It is redundant. And if you have too many bubbles, maybe more than, you know, three in between three to seven is uh, ideal, but more than seven bubbles at any level of DFD, then it becomes very difficult for a viewer to understand that this DFD model. So how long we are going to decompose it? So decomposition of a bubble will be carried out till a level at which the function of the bubble can be described using a simple algorithm, right? A bubble which can be represented or described in, as a simple algorithm, we will decompose our higher level functions to this level of sub functions only till this point. Let us take an example that is RMS calculating software. Just uh, think about a software which we call as RMS calculating software. It, it reads three integers from the range minus 1000 to plus 1000. And then we try to find out the RMS that is root mean square of the three output numbers. And we display the unit uh, in, the, in the form of results. The context diagram level 0 is simple to develop. The system accepts three integers from the user and returns the result to him. So what will be the idea of this? So in this RMS uh, calculating software, this is a simple context diagram which is level 0 DFD. We have users and these are the functions which is compute RMS. The data items would be from this the flow will be like this and the result will be used by or will be displayed to the user. So for a cursory analysis of the problem description, we can see that the system needs to perform various things as it seems that it is very easy or easy problem to solve. But there are various things which needs to be performed. First, we have to accept input numbers from the user and then we have to validate the numbers. Then we have to compute the RMS of the input numbers and finally to present them or display the result. Okay, first is this, we need to read numbers, then validate numbers, data items are like this. Then if valid numbers are there, we must compute the RMS and this RMS should be displayed. But if the validation is unsuccessful, some error has to be displayed and the result has be, is to be utilized by the user. In this case, we, uh, we again have some calculated squared sum, we validate the number. This squared sum is used to calculate mean and this mean square is again used to calculate root. This is called as root mean square. Going further down, this is square again for A, this is square for B, this is square for say C. Then we compute the square of A, square of B, square of C and pass it here to sum it up. And then we pass the squared sum to the next uh, function. So this kind of decomposition we have seen 
is never carried out on a, a too basic instruction level. A bubble is not decomposed any further, as we have seen. It can just be represented by a simple set of instructions. Data dictionary. A DFD is always accompanied by our data dictionary. DFD will always have a data dictionary. What is this data dictionary? It lists all data items which appears in this DFD, like definition of all composite data items in terms of their component data items, and also all data names along with the purpose of these data items. For instance, a data dictionary entry may be something like this: gross pay is equal to regular pay plus overtime pay. So, what is the importance of this data dictionary, which is always with our DFD? It provides us in a project with standard terminology for all the data. So, there is a consistent vocabulary for data, which is very important. And different people, different engineers, and stakeholders, they tend to use different terms to refer to the same data, which may cause unnecessary confusion. So, this data dictionary it provides definition of different data. With reference to their component elements for large systems, this data dictionary it grows rapidly in size and complexity. And the again for large systems, the typical projects can have number of thousands of data dictionary entries. So it is it becomes very uh, difficult, extremely difficult to maintain such dictionary manually. For that, we have case computer aided software engineering. So tools case tools becomes quite handy. So case tools capture the data items appearing in a DFD automatically to generate the data dictionary. Case tools they capture the data items in a DFD automatically to generate the data dictionary. So case tool it support it support queries about definition and usage of data items. Case tools and also let's take an uh, for instance queries can also be fired to find out which data item affects which processes, which process affects which data items, the definition is in the usage of specific data items, etc. So query handling is facilitated by data dictionary and case tools if data dictionary is stored in RDBMS, Relational Database Management System. So composite data, they are defined in terms of the primitive data items. We can use these operators like plus. So this denotes composition of data items. A plus B represents data A and B. And this represents three commas or different commas. Any one of the data item listed inside square bracket can occur. Just say, for example, A comma B, it represents either A occurs or B occurs. This bracket, the content inside the bracket represents optional data, which may or may not appear. For example, A plus bracket B represents either A or A plus B occurs, wherever it occurs. Braces or curly brackets, it represents iterative data definition. For example, we place name inside curly braces and file. It represents five name data. Coming to now the other possibilities, name star, it represents zero or more instances of the name data. And is equal to, it represents equivalence. This is equal to, single is equal to. For example, A is equal to B plus C means that uh, A represents B plus C. And star and star, anything appears between or within this star and star is considered to be a comment. So we have been following or trying to make something out of RMS software, root mean square. These, these bullets they represent the data dictionary. First of all, you have name, say ABC valid number, A, this is the input number, this is comment, B colon integer, C colon integer, ASQ integer, BSQ integer, CSQ integer, sum is equal to sum or sum colon, then this is equal to sign for result, RMS integer, error string, this is error message. How to balance a DFD now? Data flows for in a bubble. Data flow inside and it can go outside. So this data flowing must match the data flow at the next level of DFD. We call it as balancing a DFD. In the level one of the DFD, the data item uh, say C flows into the bubble P3 as we have seen in the previous representation and the data item D will flow to D and E flow out. In the next level, bubble P3 is decomposed. The decomposition is balanced as data item C flows into the level 2 diagram and D and E flow out. Okay, what we have just spoken, let us see. 
So here A is incoming, B is incoming, but this P3 has C incoming and D and E are going. This is level 1. I want to make it level 2. So I am interested in P3. So I have to show that in this P3, C is coming as shown here and D and E going out. So I showed here, D and E should come out from some or the other representation of P3. How to number the bubbles, numbering the bubbles? So numbers help in unique, uniquely identifying any bubble from its bubble number. The bubble at context level, we assign the number 0. Bubble at next level, we assign the, the name as 0 0.1, 0 0.2 and 0 0.3. Then when a bubble number x is decomposed, say uh, some one number or two number is decomposed, the children bubble are numbered as x.1, that is x will take 2 or 3, this value, 2.1, 2.2, 2.3, etc. For example, in tic-tac-toe computer game, the human player and the computer makes alternate moves on a 3 by 3 square. A move consists of uh, marking previously unmarked square and the user inputs a number from say 1 to 9 to mark a square. Whoever of these two, human or computer, is first to place three consecutive marks along a straight line, say along a row, a row or a column or diagonal on the square, they, it wins. So as soon as either of these two wins, a message announcing the winner should be displayed. And if neither player manages to get these three consecutive marks along a straight line, what would be done? All the squares on the board needs to be filled up and the game is supposed to be drawn. So the computer always tries to win a game, of course. So context diagram for this, the level one is human player, display move and tic-tac toe, software zero. What about level one? If move is there, we have to see that the move and display, it needs to be there. So we have move and we have result also. So we validate move, place it to the board, display board, or it takes play move from 0 0.3, and it check winner from 0 0.4. So play move, display board, validate move, these are all 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, as I just suggested that we have these values. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. So bubbles at level 1 are like this. Okay. Now, the data dictionary of this will be, display will be game plus result, move will be an integer, board will be something like this, integer with 9, game will be integer with 9 and result will be string. So let us summarize what we have discussed today. We discussed a uh, sample function oriented software design methodology, structured analysis and structured design. So this is what we discussed in the beginning, which incorporates future for some important design methodologies and software analysis and design. They consist of two parts, software analysis and software design. The goal of this structured analysis would be decomposition of the system, functional decomposition of the system, while the result of structural analysis will be represented using your data flow diagrams. So we examine why hierarchical model is easy to understand. We saw how 7 has come up as the magic number. During structure design, the DFD representation is then transformed to the structure chart representation. DFDs are very simple and therefore very popular. DFD model is difficult to implement using programming language. Structure chart representation can be easily implemented using a programming language. In uh, structure analysis, we discuss a few examples, RMS and tic-tac-toe. Various case tools are available which support structure analysis and design, maintain the data dictionary and check whether DFD they are balanced or not. So thank you so much. This is about function oriented stuff.